Welcome to JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. Now, you're probably wondering, why should I watch over here instead of anywhere else? And that's because over there, they don't care about what you have to say. They say this all the time. They talk down to us. They think we're just a bunch of clowns on YouTube, Twitter. But I think it's the opposite. I think we know exactly what we're talking about. So I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're watching a clip of First Things First, talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Apparently, the Dallas Cowboys are fed up with Micah Parsons. They have worn thin. Apparently, there's been reports saying that they would be happy to see him go or relieved. This is fascinating because we all know Micah's great, right? There's no disputing how great he is. But I argue in more recent times, the way our culture and society evolves as a whole, we are less likely to put up with these more difficult personalities as time goes on. People seem to have less patience or less willingness to put up with it back in, say, the 90s, right? And I think we've been on this trajectory for a while. It's not to say that we won't ever put up with these difficult people, but it's becoming more and more of a burden. People want to deal with it less as well as there's too good of talent around the league and up and coming in draft after draft after draft that you know they these players no longer have the same level of that power not to mention since the offense has changed in the NFL so significantly and the quarterback has only consistently gotten more and more and more and more powerful that's it's like if you're going to put up with nonsense from anyone it's going to be a quarterback outside of that it's like you know no matter how amazing if Micah Parsons was 20 percent better than he is right now which would make him you know the greatest probably athlete you know professional player ever in the history of the NFL it's still not enough to push the Cowboys into winning a Super Bowl now make Dak Prescott 10 15 percent better than he is right now and the exact same team, you can probably win a Super Bowl. Not probably, like, you definitely can. That's the difference. That's the difference in power of the position. And so when Micah is doing all this, it's like, yes, Micah, you're amazing. Yes, Micah, you help us win games. Our team is better with you, without a doubt. But you know what? At the end of the day, you're not proving to be the difference between us winning a Super Bowl and not. So if you're going to be a burden on this franchise, if you're going to be a culture suck in this within this organization, why do we need you? So I'm really curious to see what they have to say and what their opinion of this is. Um, so we'll take a listen and we'll break it down further from there. Then with the Cowboys, Trayvon Diggs responding with some tweets. Uh, who said that? And that's weird. <laughs> Shaking my head. Uh, Brew, is Mike a part of the problem or the solution in Dallas? Uh, Wiles, all I got to say is this, or the first thing I have to say is, I am so glad that unlike some people on this set, mm -hmm. I did not pick the Cowboys to win the NFC East. <laughs> I am so glad, because it's already, already? started. Oh, okay. Now, Micah is not a part of the problem. He is the solution. Oh, okay. We agree okay. there. So why are you going to take but, shots at well, me? Well, I'm just saying, there are, there are NFL predictions. Why Did is this crazy? I got I lost no, on that. No, but Nick's been singing the Cowboys. No, I, are you bad? Off. That's no, I, on, he said the NFC East. Yeah, it's just, just that East. I don't believe in the Eagles because I don't believe in, what do you call it, an existential funk or something? <laughs> so, yeah. so supernatural <laughs> song. Supernatural, no, sorry. I mean... Micah, and you guys know, I, I'm not that big of a fan of him doing... It's a great podcast, but Is it? I think... <laughs> well, it's fun for us. We get a ton of, 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 of ammo, ammunition from I mean, I it. Just... It's not the greatest thing for the team, sure. I don't think. A young guy who hasn't won yet, who's still building... It's not like he's Draymond Green, who's won rings and yeah. played his best basketball. That's right. All right, Travis so, and Jason. Yeah, even Paul George, yeah. who hadn't won, but he's a veteran Again, at least. these things... And so yeah. I don't think that's great. But Micah, what is he... Other than I... that, what, there's no problem. He doesn't have any character issues. He's not in, in the police blotter and things like that's that. That's exactly so, right. You totally know what true. I mean? Like, totally I think... True. You saw when, when uh, d this is going way back, when uh, Des Bryant was up for his contract. They, you know, you little stuff like this come out with Dak. 
little stuff like this comes out. I, I think this is the Cowboys trying to get some leverage to maybe so, get the price down. Oh. From, and the fact that it's coming from a guy that interviews Jerry Jones every week on his radio show, 105.3, just is going to lend credibility to the report for Micah and for Trayvon Diggs and, and other Cowboys. They're going to oh, be like, it, it, he talks to Jerry every week. So, so he must know he's the, and even if he, he the, and I don't think Sean would say, I don't want to speak for him, uh, but that this came from Jerry, but he's connected to the team. Somebody he's been doing right. radio in Dallas for a dozen years, uh, that, Sean Sharif. And so I, I don't, I do believe his reporting. I think it is nonsense, though. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I think what he's, I believe that he's. Someone yeah, said yeah, it, yeah, but yeah. they're wrong. But I think but that this is, right? he, Micah Part, the reason pro football teams have these giant staffs of coaches and support people are to help the actual valuable employees mm -hmm. stay in the guardrails and make sure everything's all good. Yep. Because whenever you, in any field where you deal with, 20-something-year-old celebrity millionaires with wild talent, they might have some eccentricities yeah. that you have to manage. That's fine. That's part of the deal. Micah Parsons is the same age as Bo Nix, who's going to be coming into the draft this year. He's 24-year-old, best player on your yep. team. And the, he is, I agree with Brew entirely, like, the, he on the podcast, it's kind of weird because you can argue doing the podcast shows not great judgment, but in when he does the podcast, he has shown amazing judgment because he does it every week during the season solo, and he has said nothing. Right. That, that's right. a big problem. Right. Yeah, trust me, we would have found it. We listened to that. So I think this is interesting because, you know, I hear what they're saying. And to be clear, I'm not saying that you just get rid of Micah. Because, you know, my whole thing that I said at the top was more of just saying this general feeling that it seems like teams are unwilling all around the league now, unwilling to deal with these more difficult situations. Not to say that they won't or that it's not worth it. Um, you know, uh, you know, the Eagles have to deal with A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown is difficult. Diggs, you know being difficult um antonio brown difficult tom brady winning a super bowl with him um and it's hard for me to know i guess my concern with micah is is that he has these issues so to speak and he hasn't done enough the cowboys haven't been successful enough so he's obviously frustrated and angry and I guess I'm concerned that this stuff is is bubbling up. Right, It's kind of like if Draymond Green, this is the way I look at it. If Draymond Green's having all of these issues, as he is right now, before the war is ever won, right? That, to me, is what reminds me of the Memphis, of the Memphis Grizzlies, is that they had this attitude. They had these issues. They had these players causing trouble, both on and off the court, for that matter that they weren't able to build their dynasty because of those issues, okay? And if 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 uh, Draymond had these issues that he has right now, back in 2013, 2014, they probably would have not been able to build their dynasty. He would have brought the Warriors down too much and would have not been able to compensate for what he does on the court. You know, that that is what we saw, again, with Memphis Grizzlies. We saw it play out perfectly. And that's why Draymond even said, you got it wrong. You know, the the, the dynasty starts after you leave about, um, I can't think of the guy's name right now, um, who's no longer with the Grizzlies. He's with uh, the Houston uh, Rockets. His name has slipped my mind. And so to me, that is what we start flirting with, with Micah, right? And even Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown was not going to win a Super Bowl if it wasn't for Tom Brady. And the Steelers dealt with all his issues, dealt with it, dealt with it, dealt with it. And then they were finally like, get out of here. And then A.B. got lucky that Tom Brady said, okay, I knight you. I'll, I'll take you on board. He threw him not a life raft. He threw him a yacht to get onto. A, a, a rescue ship as a yacht, okay? A super yacht at that. Um, and so otherwise, what would have A.B. done? 
Nothing. Nothing. So that's that, that's kind of the issue here with a Micah. Micah can win. You put Micah on a legit team, he can win. Now, to me, the very interesting question is where they said, is he the problem or the solution? It's a fascinating question. It's it's truly a fascinating question to me because clearly the culture in Dallas is flawed at this point. Is the culture it being flawed and it being an issue? Is that what then causes Micah to continue to be a problem? Or is he contributing to the poor culture, right? Is it the chicken or the egg type thing? I don't know. And that's why I want to leave this up to some of my Cowboys fans as well, especially O'Shea. O'Shea is my go-to um, Cowboys fan. He comments on here, a subscriber. So I'm, you know, hopefully you see this video and I'm leaving it up to you. Like, what do you think? You have a better pulse on the culture of, of the Cowboys and, and what the general consensus is. I, I don't, and I will never pretend to act like I know something and just say it all confidently just because I'm in front of the camera. It's not what I care to do. I want to be very honest about the things that I know versus don't know, which is why I'm all passionate about this being a community and not just me telling you guys things. Um, so please, I want to really genuinely hear your opinions on this one because I, I don't fully know. You know, again, the Eagles are having the same issue similarly with A.J. Brown, as I said earlier, and yet, I wouldn't be prepared to get rid of A.J. Brown, but that's offense. And it makes our quarterback better. You know, and offense is everything right now in the NFL. So it matters more. I would not be so inclined if A.J. Brown was the equivalent person causing troubles and he was on defense. I would be like, yeah, whatever. Not worth the trouble. And even now, I would be tempted. Like, I'm not saying I would want to get rid of A.J. Brown because the Eagles are without a doubt better with A.J. Brown, but I don't love it. I do not love the energy that he brings and the pressure that he tries to put on Jalen to get him the ball. I don't love that. And so it's just all these other things that Mike is doing. And I do want to say, though, that, you know, in the age when um, we just had Rice getting a severe car crash, you know, almost injuring someone, that there's levels to problems, right? Someone can be problematic. He wants to win. He's passionate. He might be going away, going about it the wrong way. But I don't want to, don't get it twisted, right? He's not causing these is, these issues or anything really that bad relative to what issues could be. And so, you know, I, I do want to plant that flag. But let's take a little bit more of a listen to see what else they have to say. That thing, like, <laughs> it, like they have congressional record. And so I just, I don't, I, I think sometimes, the, I agree with Brew, the Cowboys do have an organizational reputation for, you know, negotiating through the media and i don't know if that's what this is or not but then when we now get to this next story who's their second best player who doesn't have his contract yet it kind of leads me to agreeing with brew almost entirely just to kind of this yeah. is a cop-out answer of both micah did on the podcast when he was with cd lamb say that he needs to have more accountability he lets things slide too often because we know we're good that's about me I want to change the culture. So, but that, that's fine, kind of a, and I think he's saying that as a player. Yeah, and that's and fine. But o overall, I mean, look, when they were winning championships, we know there were issues with that yeah, team. But so, to me, it has worn thin is like, it, it, to me, that brings to mind like Stefan Diggs stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh my God, this guy is just a pain in the ass in mm -hmm. the building. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to take a shot at Stefan, but that's clearly how the Bills felt about yeah. him. That's why they yeah. traded yeah. him. Yeah, and, and I it's just accurate. Don't get, I've never gotten that vibe or seen that. You know, like, here's the bad thing Micah Parsons right. did. I've never seen it. If they got rid of him, which we know they won't, I, they're not, probably not even a playoff team. Well, yeah, he's the yeah. best player on their I team. I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what Thin wears. And I forget, was it Diggs or Micah who was screaming at Dak in, uh, what was it, you know, uh, training camp? You know, and that, that whole clip went, you know, viral, where they were just yelling at him. I, I don't remember if it was Diggs or Micah, um, but yeah, Micah's personality does somewhat rub me the wrong way, personally. He is a great player, and I like him as a person and his podcast, and, and I think he means well. He's charismatic. He's charming. Like He, he has, he has the, the it factor, so to speak. But it is all these little things. I can see him being exhausting. 
it's not to say that no team doesn't have these players that wear them thin. And especially when you're as good as Micah. But my con- again, my concern is, is just like, he's not a foxhole guy. And when you're going to pay all this money to someone, you need them to be a foxhole guy. You need someone to be there with you to the very end. Um, you know, they talk about this in improv and, and sketch. Um, Amy Poehler gave this great, you know, um, this great uh, story where she talks about how, you know, when you're on stage, you really can tell when someone's with you or not, when someone truly has your back. And actually, before you go out on stage, like if you were going to do SNL or something like that, you actually touch everyone's back and say, I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. Um, and you can tell that sometimes you get up on stage and you're doing something and the scene is just not going well. It's bombing. No one's laughing. And it's and it's painful. I've been there. Um, I, I have done sketch and improv and it's painful. And some you have some people that you perform with, you know, they're your scene partner is what it's called. They just like a kind of abandon you in a way, right? They just check out or they're not really there. And there's other people that are like, you know, you, you make eye contact and there's a lot of like communicating where you're both like, wow, this is not working. No one is laughing at what we're doing. And you just keep doing it and, and you're connected with your scene partner. And it is, and it's a very cool experience because it's very much like you're suffering together and you're just like, all right, it's, at least it's me and you up here together. You know, we're going down the stinking ship together. And that's the difference between Micah. Micah seems like the person who abandons you, and that's not who you can have as your leader. Think of all the great leaders and the great players that we know. Do they have those personality traits? No. Whether it's Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Peyton Manning, another defensive player, Aaron Donald, right? Like it doesn't even have to just be these GOAT quarterbacks, so to speak. There's these other players who we know they are there for you. And then when we think of the players that always cause trouble, we think about, could we ever really rely on them when the moment gets tough? Can you really ever rely on Diggs or AB or Micah? And the answer is no. And then the question is then, okay, if the answer is no, is that who you want to build this team around? Micah works if Dak was elite. If Dak was Joe Burrow, and I'm not even going to say Josh Allen because Josh Allen's personality is also a little bit more passive. You know, he's he's not as, you know, I'm the man, I am the God, I am, you know, Joe Cool here. So it's like Micah works if you have Andy Reid as your head coach, Sean McVay as your head coach, right? Or if your quarterback is the Peyton Mannings, the Joe Burrows, the Patrick Mahomes, the Tom Brady's. Those work. But with a Dak, who's a little bit more laid back, more passive, which I'm not saying is a negative. That's his personality. And it's actually the thing that I like about Dak more than anything, quite honestly. That allows for Micah's bad qualities fester. And so that's the problem that I see with players like a Micah, like a Diggs, like an A.J. Brown. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think the the Cowboys should do with Micah? Do you think he's part of the solution or part of the problem? Let me know. And please don't forget to subscribe. As I said, we are building an amazing community here and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. And I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.